All right, so we're live on YouTube. And at the same time, I'm uh, gonna be going live for uh, you guys who are not on YouTube. I will be going live uh, on Instagram uh, just so we can get some uh, good questions from there. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about fat loss. So a uh, big topic and for everybody who just joined on Instagram, uh, topic is fat loss for today. Uh, we're going to go over some of the myths. Uh, we're going to be going over some of the uh, things that you need to know uh, to maximize fat loss. And I'm going to be also taking a bunch of questions as well uh, from chat. Uh, so for all of you guys who are uh, in the uh, live chat right now, uh, welcome everybody on Instagram. Uh, today's topic is how to lose fat. Uh, so I'll be taking um, questions on that. Uh, we're definitely going live on many different things. Hey, hello, everybody. Um, welcome. Uh, let me know in the chat where you're watching from uh, so uh, uh, we can get some good stuff going here. I'm going to... Um, <laughs> uh, let me put some uh, stuff here on uh, Instagram just so people know uh, what's going on right now. I'm going to pin this comment here. Boom, that's done. Hello everybody on uh, YouTube. Uh, let me know how this stream is going for you guys because uh, oftentimes there's a little bit of a lag. Uh, so we do wanna make sure that we're getting everything right. Uh, so make sure you guys can see this properly. Uh, Mexico, England, Austria, uh, that is dope. We got people from everywhere. I'm actually uh, flying to Mexico soon myself. Uh, that's uh, one thing that I uh, did not expect, but I will be flying there soon. Uh, right now, actually, what you guys see, I am in uh, Bulgaria, in Sofia right now. Uh, it is uh, pretty cool here. Um, and uh, hello, Indonesia. Uh, awesome. So a few things when we're talking about fat loss that I want to uh, talk a bit about and something that, that I think a lot of people get wrong and uh, something that I've been uh, a big, I guess, advocate of in sort of this evidence-based uh, fitness field that we have is uh, not forgetting what really drives fat loss uh, when we have all these methods, we have all these different strategies and, and tactics people use to uh, get on a calorie deficit. It's often very easy to get lost uh, with confusion to forget what are the methods and what are the basic principles on how you're going to lose fat, right? And I'm going to give you guys a few examples. So an example of a method or a strategy uh, would be intermittent fasting, right? So that would be a strategy that may help you apply a principle of getting into a calorie deficit and make that calorie deficit then that will generate the fat loss because the fat loss will happen because of the deficit it will not happen because of the uh, intermittent fasting, right? And this is where a lot of you guys will definitely see a lot of people on uh, Facebook groups or on YouTube comments and everywhere. They're, they're going to confuse uh, the cause and effect because certain things are correlated, but they're not a, a causative relationship, right? So something can correlate with something, but it's not going to cause that same thing, right? So uh, there's many different examples of uh, correlation or causation. For example, if you're, uh, you know, if you drop out of high school at 16, you're more likely to get pregnant right? Um, that doesn't mean that dropping out of high school will impregnate you, especially not if you're a guy. <laughs> so um, a couple of those examples, you guys probably see where this is going, right? So uh, there's different things that, that, can, that are causing and there's different things that, that they can correlate with each other. So when it comes to dieting, people will often attribute their success to things that uh, merely happen at the same time. So uh, same as athletes sometimes say, well, you know, I wear my favorite socks because that's the socks where I played the best game, you know, when I wear them or things like that. Or, or in this shirt, uh, my batting average in baseball is much higher than, uh, much, much better than it is in this, uh, in this other shirt. And there's all these kinds of relationships that, I mean, we're, we have this believing brain uh, our brain that wants to believe in, in certain things. And um, it's very easy for us to, to find patterns and things that we're looking for patterns. We, we're really good at pattern recognition. So we'll often recognize a pattern in somewhere that doesn't even exist or it's not, not 
a pattern that we can actually use. And this is why uh, randomized controlled trials and research is so important because then you can actually control variables and you can compare. Well, you know, if you have a group that's doing three meals a day and a group that is doing six meals a day, and this group is eating in a smaller eating window and this one is eating all day and they eat the exact same calories, same macros, and they will have um, very similar results. So there, was, there would not be no statistical a significant difference between the two groups in fat loss and that kind of tells you well that really means that the cause is still the, the the calorie deficit and not the fasting or not the reduced meal frequency or not in some cases the increased meal frequency which was uh, kind of the thing that we used to think before uh, i don't know if how many of you guys have uh, come from the uh, background where you thought that uh, eating six meals or seven or eight meals a day will actually improve your fat loss. That's kind of the background that I'm coming from. I remember uh, back in the day when I first started my journey, when I went on a fat loss diet, um, there were guys that were telling me, so, so these were guys that were shredded. They were telling me, if you don't eat every two hours, so if you don't have protein and, and food every two hours, you're uh, not only you're slowing down fat loss, but you're also losing muscle. Imagine the paranoia that someone like, and I'm not sure if you guys can resonate with this. I don't know how paranoid you are about your results, but I was kind of like, I want to really nail this. I want to do it right. So I was always looking for ways how to do things right and how to avoid as many mistakes as possible. So when someone told me, look, this is what works just follow it it works 100 percent and it is really about eating frequently so smaller meals and, and many meals a day so seven eight meals a day six to eight um this guy told me he was really jacked and he was uh, he was a natural but he was really jacked and uh, i was basically following that advice and, and and i was extremely paranoid i was basically living uh in in this uh food obsessed state where i would be carrying almonds with me in my pockets my pockets would be full of almonds i would always have food in my car uh when, when i was living back home i had a car uh, now that i'm traveling i kind of am against cars so i try to walk everywhere um uh, i was uh paranoid if i would go to the beach i would make sure to bring um i'd make sure to bring like these tupperware boxes with me i even had this uh backpack that was basically called the six pack bag i think and you can you have these tupperware containers which you can bring there and the bag also has like these um these things that you cool off so it keeps the bag cool and i was literally bringing that to the beach in croatia and i'd be i'd, I'd basically eat then i would wait for an hour for to let the food settle because also there was this belief that if you <laughs> If you want the, the, the nutrients to have a good effect, you have to just completely chill out and lie down after you eat. So basically, I'd, uh, here, here's my life, right? So I ate food, one hour rest. I had then one hour to do some activity, and then I had to eat again, right? So I'd go swim and go out with my friends, take a walk, and we just play around on the beach and do stuff like that. And then, oh, okay, the clock is ticking. Like, <laughs> better go back and have some food. So... Uh, this is really a crazy obsession to live in and I'm, I'm really fortunate that I'm able to share with you guys today that, uh, for example, meal frequency doesn't matter as much, uh, that you can skip breakfast if you don't eat breakfast. Uh, yesterday, I was flying here to Sofia. I had my first meal at 4.30 p.m. I woke up at 6 in the morning and, and that was fine. That was cool, right? I, I it just fasted all day. It's, it's totally fine, right? And I wasn't paranoid that I'm going to lose muscle. I wasn't paranoid that I would fall off track with anything else. And and you just accept the fact you fast, you drink a lot of water, like um, yeah, don't forget your H2O. And and it's awesome, right? Uh, so this is one of those myths that has been around for a long time. Uh, now, one thing that I want to mention here as well is when it comes to meal frequency, a lot of people, because meal frequency matters less, then you know you must eat six meals a day there's a lot of pushback on in the other extreme now where people are you know one meal a day or two meals a day maximum you know if you eat more than two meals a day you know you're not benefiting from um like um, fasting autophagy and other things which is not actually it is sort of evidence-based that we don't really know right now how much evidence is if you're if you're already getting an effect of autophagy from exercise are you getting that effect is that effect enhanced because you're doing more fasting or not so uh you know th there's things like that 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 it's unclear and people will some people i'm not saying all people but some people will jump to conclusions and they will uh, they will kind of uh 
say that they're scientific, but they're not actually being like very strictly evidence-based. So it's more of like a guess on their part, which is about 50-50, right? So they can be right, they can be wrong. But regardless, um, uh, when we're talking about meal frequency, there's a pretty good rationale for having about three to four meals a day. So I would say, you know, if you're playing it on a safe side, if you're looking to maximize uh, muscle protein synthesis throughout the day, uh, if you're looking to really optimize for muscle gain uh, and also for muscle retention, I would say it's a pretty good rationale to eat about three to four meals a day because you're getting, uh, let's say if you're hitting your leucine threshold, I can explain to you guys what leucine threshold is if you guys don't know what that is. Um, uh, we can talk a bit about that. But uh, if you're hitting your leucine threshold with uh, higher doses of protein, so 30, let's say 30 grams of protein per meal, about three to four times a day, um, you're, you're, you're sort of maximizing something where the way I look at this is having two meals a day versus three or four, you don't benefit from much, right? But there's a potential downfall. So the reward that you're getting for that is not justifying the potential negative effect that may be accumulated over years and months and things like that. So I would say um, I'm kind of in the middle of ground now where I do recommend to almost all my clients uh, it was somewhere between uh, three or four servings of protein a day. That doesn't mean that they have to have strict three meals or four meals. You can get protein from other sources like supplements if you want to. I'm not a big fan, but you can do that as well. It's just giving you guys a little bit of a nuance uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, <laughs> losing fat, building muscle, and uh, just to know a little bit of what's going on when it comes to this uh, whole myth and, and fasting and, and the meal frequency. Um, so uh, greetings everybody on YouTube, greetings everybody on Instagram. I'm now gonna look through some of the questions. So uh, bear with me for a minute. I'm just gonna take a look here uh, to see what's going on. There's a bunch of stuff here on, uh, on YouTube and on Instagram, so I'm gonna try to scroll. Um, greetings Sweden, uh, <laughs> greetings everybody else here. Um, <laughs> great seeing you, uh, awesome. Uh, calorie deficit, a bunch of other stuff here. So uh, let me see here. Um, uh, I cut for five months with intermittent fasting. 16-8, full day fast, I lost seven kilos of fat. I think I am around 15% body fat. I was never really hungry, but now I'm always hungry. Uh, whatever I do, is that normal? So actually, that's a good question. Uh, one thing I would say, guys, try to lose too much fat at once. I would say this is almost like a universal problem that I see uh, out there is that guys would want to lose, you know, 15, 20% of their body weight at once in one go. That's what I mean. But basically from day one, they want to basically just go all out to diet for as long as it takes to reach a certain goal. I'm not a big fan of losing more than I would say 10 to maximum 15% of your body weight in one stretch before taking a diet break because you can dig yourself into a hole uh, where your adaptations are getting so difficult, you're becoming very hungry, your training performance will start suffering, and you will start experiencing more adaptations than you should if you've taken potentially a more slower, more controlled approach, and if you've taken enough diet breaks in the process. So I'm a big fan of diet breaks. Uh, I try to implement that even with my clients. Uh, and, and I know a lot of coaches actually don't like to do that because uh, technically a diet break is, uh, is not a sexy testimonial, just to put it like that. You know, a lot of coaches out there, they would want their clients to get as shredded as possible in, in, in a short amount of time as possible, right? And, and even though sometimes you can get great uh, kind of you know results if you keep dieting let's say someone for six months straight you just keep dieting someone you can get them more shredded but the question is what happens after that right so is the person just going to be shredded for three four weeks or maybe like two weeks and they have to go they're just going to flip out regain a, hun a whole bunch of body fat because they're, they're super hungry and they have to go back into uh, you know it's kind of a stage where it's very risky to get into that perma cutting which i talked about uh last time where you're not lean enough to lean gain, but you're also kind of in between. So you look like crap, but you have to gain because you've been cutting all the time. And if you don't gain, you're kind of wasting your time cutting again. Terrible place to be at. So I'm a big fan of um, having, let's say, 
I think Mike Usertil also talks about this a little bit. So for every 10% of your body weight loss, you would take a diet break. And I mean like 10% after the initial water weight loss because you may lose some water weight initially um, when you start a diet, especially if the diet is lower in carbs, depending on what, how you set it up. That also is very individual, so I, I'm not going to get into that too much. So um, what uh, the person here, uh, Mike Ying, uh, mentioned that he's very hungry. I, I truly feel that that's because you try to lose all the – all the way at once uh, and you can take uh, I think you, after five months of straight dieting uh, you deserve a diet break uh, to maintenance so uh, I would uh, warmly recommend that as far as that you said that you cut five months with intermittent fasting this is again related to the thing I said earlier because you did intermittent fasting to me as a coach or someone who's an evidence-based practitioner that really means nothing um, because you're telling me that you just fasted, but that doesn't really change anything, right? Uh, because you lost fat because you were in a calorie deficit. You didn't lose the fat because you were doing some fasting, right? So just to make that clear and to remember that, that you're, you don't want to confuse a tactic with the uh, principle, right? So a tactic is cut carbs. Principle is like get into a calorie deficit. All diets work ba based on the same principle of getting into a calorie deficit, right? So there's, di there's better diets, there's worse diets, but at the end of the day, if you're losing weight, you're in a deficit. If you're not losing any weight, you're not in a calorie deficit and you're not on a quote-unquote diet, right? Even the word diet is a little bit, uh, yeah, we can get into some <laughs> definitions there. Diet really means the way of, way of living. If you look at the root definition of the word um, diet, uh, I would say... Uh, I would say that's probably, uh, uh, it's not as associated so much with, uh, it's just been recently associated so much with kind of dieting and hardcore adherence to a to restrictive diet, but overall diet really means just a way of living, like a lifestyle. Uh, that's what the word means um, if you look at it. So uh, pretty cool. I'm going to look through some of the stuff on Instagram now uh, just to see what you guys have been uh, posting here. There's some really cool stuff. It's hard to, to me to lose belly fat. Welcome to the club. Uh, it's definitely not, uh, having a six pack is definitely not easy. Uh, it doesn't come easy for, I would say 90% of people out there. It's definitely not uh, the easiest thing in the world. Uh, I think I read some interesting statistic for you guys. I think uh, I had this discussion with one of my clients recently. Based on the statistics in the United States, it's easier to become a millionaire than it is to have a six pack i think that it and it's by by some great it's like by some great um, amount of difference there so um <laughs> i can't remember off the top of my head but your chances of becoming a millionaire are are pretty significant compared to the chances of you having a six pack so uh don't kind of like because we live in this bubble where you know if you follow a lot of people on um, on social media you know everybody's like super jacked and ripped Actually, you're, you're, you're among a minority if you're jacked and if you're at 10% body fat or below. Like you're, you're definitely a minority. Remember, two-thirds of the U.S. population is overweight, one-third is obese. That means 200 million people are uh, not anywhere near a six-pack. Uh, then again, the average body fat as well is, is pretty high. So uh, yeah, if you have a six-pack, man, you're, you're, you're among the minority. You're definitely among uh, a very small group of people. Uh, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, guys, great questions here. Uh, I'm going to check out some of the other stuff. Someone is asking here a question about creatine. Um, I like the high peak of energy it gives me when training, but should I stop using it during summertime because the water making me look worse? Uh, that's not correct. You should not. I don't see. Um, I don't really see the reason why you would stop supplementing creatine if it's uh, actually if you're actually a responder. Uh, if you're responding really, really well to creatine, uh, you should basically take it because there's, I mean, it, it's basically uh, it, the only supplement that I could recommend you because there's evidence behind it is creatine and it does help you replenish ATP, which is not going to only help you in the gym, but it's also going to help you into day-to-day -day functions. ATP is your uh, currency for energy all around the body. So it is actually very, uh, uh, very, very, very important. Uh, for everything else. Hello, everybody. Um, that is pretty cool. Uh, someone is asking here why I haven't uploaded so many videos recently. Well, that's been because I've been massively focused on uh, 
my clients that has been the main focus for a long time now and I try to do some work here uh, as I can to do some lives and, and things like that uh, but my primary occupation now uh, and, and everything I do really right now and most of my day is really filled with client work uh, I work uh, with people personally so it's not some kind of outsourced you know like some uh, nonsense that you can uh, delegate you work with people personally so uh, you have to be involved you have to be there it takes a lot of time a lot of mental energy a lot of um, a lot of dedication and you have to keep growing and improving yourself and you have to keep um, delivering fantastic results for people and, and that's really what I'm passionate about the most um, so kind of YouTube and Instagram had to take a little bit of a step back uh, there but I will of course try to do my best and uh, try to be everywhere as much as possible uh, and uh, let me tell you guys one thing in December 2017 uh, it's the first time in the last six years where I took one day uh, without work per week so that that's the first time in six years that I took Sundays that I will not work um, and, and I still did some work like reply to an email here or there but it's like the first time when I said you know when I flew back home uh, for Christmas I, I told myself you have to force yourself not to work one day a week um, so, so because you get in you, it becomes like when you're running your own business and, and this is a little bit of a side tangent I'm just gonna share this with you guys because I think it's very relevant uh, when you're running your own business you feel like you know the more work you do the better results you get and it's really easy to get caught into this uh, into this trap where you're doing like you're always working right because you're always kind of valuing okay this minute that I'm spending on let's say uh, I don't know you're going to the movies with your friends you're kind of valuing now okay this uh, time that I'm spending with my friends at the movies and time what it would happen if I'd mess that time into my business and you're thinking well damn you know maybe I can get more return on my investment if I spend it into my business instead of going to watch the movie and now you're starting getting all these uh, <laughs> all these weird things where it, it basically becoming a workaholic you're getting addicted to the feeling of getting things done and it sometimes can it really have negative consequences for your life uh, and um, I've been uh, I've been actively trying to work less um, just to <laughs> it's a little bit of weird but I'm actively tr trying to work a little bit less and uh, also um, just not you know just to value my own health and, and my own progress in the gym and, and and the people in my life and and just everything you know it just it can become very easily one-sided at least for me uh, so um, I, I'm always having to control myself a little bit uh, a few other questions came in here do I still travel around the world um, kind of I try to travel less now because I finished one world tour so I'm trying to uh, travel less I, I'm actually right now in Sofia Bulgaria I'm gonna be going to Barcelona soon um, in a few days I'm gonna also be flying to Mexico uh, where I'm gonna be spending uh, some time and I'm gonna go back to uh, Europe again I, I'm trying to travel less so I want to minimize my travel only uh, to when I do bigger events so events of 150 people or more uh, because again it's taking too much out of my productivity and from just you know it's not the same as travel for work and travel for um, for you know just to travel and um, I want to focus even more on the business side of things and even more on serving and helping out um, clients and and also there's there's a lot of value in after you've traveled for five years straight non-stop every three months every two three months new country a new city you start seeing that there's value in depth so staying in one place for longer and, and making connections with people and making friends and, and going a little bit deeper than just kind of moving all the time there's actually a lot of value in that so it's it's good to alternate things to be balanced and I'm always a, I mean it's not a very sexy thing but I'm a fan of balance and trying to balance out things so yeah that's uh, that's kind of how I'm looking at things uh, right now I may visit Dublin soon someone is asking here I have a really good friend uh, Danny Lennon in Ireland um, he's, a, he's a really cool dude so uh, he was inviting saying really good things about um, Ireland and uh, he's a cool dude so I may actually visit him there's a lot of stuff happening in Dublin as well um, great stuff great questions here um, <laughs> a lot of stuff here oh my god uh, a lot of questions so 
I'll try to go through some of them. Uh, we'll also have to jump off soon because I have a, I have a meeting uh, with my team in about 15 minutes from now. Um, when can we see you in India? Uh, nothing planned yet. Uh, I, I try not to travel so far. I try to minimize uh, travel that is longer than a few hours in, in the airplane. It just absolutely kills me and uh, yeah, I don't like to do it. What do you think about going to the sauna after workout? I don't see anything wrong with that. Sauna is pretty cool. Mm. Any tips on being more consistent with your plan to get shredded? Oh boy, that's a whole topic for a video. <laughs> it's a whole topic for a video. Um, oh man, don't forget your goal, okay? I think one of the biggest things when you're, when you're doing something that is hard, when you're doing something that is really, really hard, it's very easy to forget your goals and why you're doing it. And when I say forget your goals, it's like, when you're in your own kind of environment with your friends and with everybody who is uh, not on the journey, who's not really sharing the same goals, it's very easy for you to forget yours because that's kind of how we, you know, we integrate, you know, we, we want to kind of be social with other people. So we forget our own stuff and, and we easily let go when we see everybody around us letting go. And, and it's so easy to kind of be consistent fall off track, consistent fall off track. And you kind of alternate those phases, you never really get to your goal and you're just getting more and more frustrated. So kind of keeping your goal in mind and really being driven from a standpoint of like planning ahead uh, for every possible scenario that can, uh, that can occur, you know, think ahead what may happen, budget really well, know thyself, you know, like know, okay, if I'm in that environment, this is very likely to happen. So you know, really prioritize the goal, you know, getting shredded is not easy. So it's not going to happen magically, you know, and guys often think, you know, oh, I can just wing it and I'm going to get to 10% body fat. Well, I've rarely met, I mean, I know a few people have done it like that and they're just kind of naturally skinnier guys who've gained weight because they went on some kind of crazy bulk and they naturally leaned out. But it's, uh, it doesn't happen randomly, right? So you must be very deliberate. You must plan. You must have uh, clear goals for a week and clear goals uh, for a month and for six months or for three months. Include those diet breaks in there. You know, work really hard on, on keeping the system running uh, while the life is happening because life will be happening uh, regardless of what your goals are. And that's something you have to accept. So being you know perfectionist about it and thinking that you're just going to have this phase in your life where you can, you know, dedicate your full time to getting shredded that, that's just not going to happen if you want to be successful that's just not going to happen for you right and i assume all of you guys here you guys want to crush it in your life and if you do want to crush it in your life you're just not going to have this phase in your life where nothing is going to you know be bothering you so you can then dedicate yourself fully to fitness and health and that's what i see with a lot of my clients who are uh, now i mean and for a lot of guys reaching out to me um for coaching and to join my mastermind to, to join my mentoring program is that these are guys that are often delayed it uh, for like a year before they made a decision and they're like looking back now they're like oh yeah I was waiting for this to end and then th I was waiting for this to end and I was waiting for this to end and it never really ended and they're just realized it's always going to be happening it's like some some stuff some life thing is going to be you know preventing me it's going to be an obstacle so I have to learn how to deal with the obstacle and also get to my goal and uh, that's really what it's all about. And, and I think that's when you come to that realization that it's never going to get easier. Uh, it, it's just about you getting better and more skilled and knowing what to do. You're just going to then start becoming more consistent. And also, uh, you're, you're going to get to your result, actually get to it. Because uh, this whole thing about, you know, I'm going to cut for three months in two months because then, you know, after my birthday or something after this, after that, there's always something like, there's always after, you know, there's always the next day, there's always the next event, and there's always going to be the holiday. So um, one thing I'd urge you guys who are, you know, seriously thinking about, you know, getting to your goal, like finally getting this whole thing handled is like, forget about the phase when it's all going to be peaceful and ready for you to take the leap and ready for you to take action. It's just not going to happen. Okay. I can tell you right now, it's never going to happen if you want to be successful or in your life because there's always going to be some business relationship or some kind of thing that is going to be bothering you other than health and fitness that is never going to be uh, completely calm for you to just dedicate yourself to this. 
So it's all about you making the best out of the situation. And uh, of course, uh, for all of you guys who are in that position right now, where are you are, you do want to take it seriously, definitely reach out. Um, I actually put a link somewhere. Um, you can go to atomic.com. There's a contact form if you if you are uh, if you're interested in, in really getting some serious results. We can talk about that. You can just reach out to me and uh, we'll figure we'll figure out really where you stand. But for the most part, I think the biggest mistake that I've personally made and and then the kind of the myth that I've fallen for as well is kind of the thought that you know after that bachelor party, you know, after that trip, after that holiday, then I'm going to do it. And guess what? That holiday ends and there's something else, right? There, like that thing ends, there's something else and there's always something else. <laughs> so there's no, there's no point, right? You got to like take it for what it is right now and just make the best out of it. Um, this is awesome. Congrats, Brett. You're absolutely crushing it. Brett says he had 102 kg last year, which is more than 225 for you guys who are in uh, pounds. Um, he said he cut down to 74 kg. It took him eight months and he's now building up his strength. Uh, this is absolutely amazing. I uh, really, really love to hear um, success stories like this. And, and congrats, Brett. You freaking nailed it, man. Um, email me at mario at uh, marioatomic.com. Send me your transformation photo. I'd love to see it, man. Um, I really am happy for you and to hear that you changed your life because this is a life changing result right here. 30 kilos is an absolute life changer, and uh, yeah, couldn't be more happy for you, bro. That's amazing. <laughs> Great work. So, um, yeah, awesome, guys. So, I will wrap this up just so I have a chance to uh, drink some water here and uh, you know get some uh, things handled before my meeting with the team. Uh, thanks everybody from Instagram. Thanks you guys from uh, YouTube. I will uh, check you guys soon. And uh, also when you're watching this video as a replay, uh, make sure to put some of your questions in the comments. Uh, so then as we do the next live, what I'm gonna be doing actually on YouTube, and this applies for you guys on, uh, on Instagram as well, go to YouTube and put your questions in the comments. So when we're doing the live next time, then I'm going to be uh, then I'm going to be answering some of those questions because those questions came in first, right? So um, definitely do that. Definitely go there. And for you guys here as well, uh, thanks for watching. I'm gonna sign off Instagram and uh, <laughs> wrap this up. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Yes, definitely put in the comments, the king, and uh, we're going to take care of it. Uh, everybody all signing off here from uh, uh, Sofia. Uh, soon we'll be signing in from Barcelona, hopefully. And I'll, uh, I'll check you guys soon, okay? Have a good one, guys. Talk soon.